Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Martin. Today we're excited to announce Remnoid 1.13, our new image occlusion cards. We've built an entirely new experience here that makes it easy to leverage visual learning for anything from diagrams, anatomy, maps, processes, and more. To get started, select an image to learn from and paste or drag and drop it into your notes. Then, in the top right of your image, press the button to make flashcards. You will immediately be brought into the new experience and can immediately begin making cards. Just click anywhere and drag to make a box to test yourself on. Here, you can then go to the preview window and see how the card will look, or you can immediately jump into practicing. If you don't want to make cards yourself, you can instead press the Generate AI Cards button. This will automatically find any text in your image and automatically make cards for them. You can see when I click here, we immediately have all seven of these cards made. In this case, I don't actually want to test myself on the title though. To get rid of this, I'll just click on it, and then I can either press delete, or I can use my keyboard to press backspace. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, just hold down control and zoom in and out to focus on any part of the image. If you have a trackpad, after zooming in, you can then also just use a normal two finger gesture to scroll around, or you can just click and drag on the scroll bars on the side. The entire experience here, including this panning and zooming, all works really well on mobile as well, so now on smaller phone devices, you can easily deal with larger images. We've also added a variety of ways to customize the boxes that you're creating. Click on any box, and you'll see a brand new floating toolbar above it. First, you can enable or disable any cards. For example, maybe you've practiced this a few times, and you don't want to delete it entirely, but you don't want to focus on it now. Just go ahead and disable it. In addition, you can grab the corners to resize any box in any direction, or you can now rotate boxes as well to make it perfectly overlap whatever part of the image you're trying to learn about. If you want to change multiple boxes at once, you can just click the checkbox on any box, check off all the boxes you want to change, and then take your action. Here, I'll just go ahead and delete them. If I have two boxes that I want to make a single card from, you can check off both of the boxes and then press merge. You'll see that the labels here both change to have the same letter, which means that a single card will be created. And if we again go to our preview mode here, you can see that on this first card, it's hiding both of these boxes here so that I can test myself on them at once. If I want to undo that, I can then just click on the box again and split it out. And you'll see that we're now back to two separate boxes here. Let me add all these cards back. Again, it's just a single click. And let's go take a look at the practice experience. First, you can see that even when practicing in normal mode, we now make sure to automatically scroll the box that you're being tested on into view. If I go to the next one, you can see we scroll back to the top and this flashed an orange. I'll do that one more time. And now you can see we're back at the bottom and that flashed an orange again. If you want to even use up more of your screen, you can now just click anywhere in the image and use the new full page image practice experience. You can see that you can still press show answer here and then can still also give your answer as well. And when you go to the next card, you'll stay in the full screen mode. If you're learning a lot of anatomy cards or learning a lot from images in general, this will be great. But even if you're only learning from a few images, this will automatically interleave itself with the other text cards in your queue as well, getting that perfect space repetition interleaving. We've also added a few other customization options to make your practice experience even better. If we go back to the editor, open the image occlusion editor, and then go to the top right, we can first see that we can enable automatically zooming in the queue. So let's check that and then go back to our practice here. And now you can see we're automatically brought down into the bottom left here so that we can focus where we need. When we go to the next card, we'll then be brought over to the right. So if you have bigger cards or are dealing with this on a smaller device, such as a phone, it's now much easier to handle larger images. Next, we've cleaned up the hide all test one feature. If you check this off and then go back to practice mode, you can see that all of the other boxes are automatically hidden so as not to spoil the answer. We've added a new type in your answer mode that will automatically grade you on what you type into the queue. If I check this here and then go back to practice, you can see that it's asking me to recall this box in case this is the temporal lobe. And if I retrieve that, you can see that it will automatically grade me and show me that I got it right. If we do that again, but get it wrong, well, then it'll tell you that you got it wrong and automatically suggest that you practice it again there. Finally, we've added an entirely new card type here. 
for testing yourself in sequence. This is especially useful for when you're learning processes or diagrams and you want to go through each step one by one. If I enable this here, you can see that a little dropdown appears on each of my boxes, and this is indicating the order in which I'll be practiced. Maybe here I want to test myself just going in a clockwise motion around this, so I'll swap these two out. So this one should be number five, and perfect, now this one is number six. If we go to practice this, then we'll see that we're brought to this mode here, and it'll first ask me on one on the top left. I can retrieve the answer, test myself, and then continue to go through each of the answers one by one. You can see that it goes one, two, three, and it'll keep going in that direction. These are all on a single card, which is testing me on everything in order, and it's automatically taking in the answers that I press for each of the buttons here. For unlabeled images, we've also added the ability to add labels directly on the image yourself. First, just draw a box. For example, I'll go drag one over the frontal lobe here, and then go to the drop down and select label back of card. I can then just type in the term for myself, frontal lobe, and then this text will automatically appear when I'm practicing only on the back of the card. If I want, I could also add a label on the front of the card as a hint, basically, and then when I go and test myself here, you can see that first we get the hint shown on the front of the card, and once I press show answer, then we also see the actual answer on the back of the card. You can really quickly create these labels here using keyboard shortcuts. So if I go and create a box over the temporal lobe here, maybe I'll rotate it a bit as well just to get it looking right, I can then just press L on my keyboard, and now I immediately am in labeling mode, and I can go ahead and type out my temporal lobe here. We've also added the ability to make concepts and links directly from boxes in the image editor. First, again, we'll just draw a box here, and we'll go to this bottom option, link a rem. In this case, we want to link this to a rem called a frontal lobe. This isn't in our account right now, so we'll just go ahead and create that. We'll then also do the same for the temporal lobe down here. Again, we'll just go and create that. You can now see that both of these are linked with the little paperclip link icon. When you close out and go back to the editor, you'll then see that these concepts were automatically added as bullets beneath our image. We can then learn more about these ideas, elaborate on them, and draw more connections by making flashcards using Remno's other editor features. For example, we can start by adding some definition to the frontal lobe for how we want to think about it. We could write some other flashcards underneath it, asking ourselves what the purpose of the frontal lobe is or what it connects to. And in general, we can just elaborate more on this idea. We can also use the linking feature as a sort of map. If we went and created another document here for just something broader for human anatomy, and then brought in an image for that, you could then imagine going to the brain here and linking this to our brain document. Now, in the editor itself, we can see that this is a link to the brain. And when we click on it, It'll bring us right over to that document here. We've added a ton of other little pieces of polish and bug fixes in this update as well. You'll notice that if you have a trackpad or a mouse with a wheel, you can scroll and zoom into any image in the editor. If you paste any image with text now, you can actually search for that, just the raw text on the image itself, using the global search, and your image will pop up in the search results. The editor has easy undo and redo buttons and a bunch of other improvements over here. And in general, we've just really tried to make this as easy and useful of an image occlusion experience for you as possible. That's it, and happy learning!